obligated as your rabbi to tell you the truth. This has been one of the hardest times of my life. And sitting down writing sermons, preparing for these high holy days, have not come as easily this year as in past years. I admit that I stand before you, a somewhat broken man. And five days will mark the four months since my mother died. A week ago today, she would have been 82 years old. I'm still not sure that I truly understand or believe that my mom is not right there next to my daughter, Shira. And for that matter, looking over there would be one of my favorite Yiddish moms, Rozzy. Roz Applebaum, who for as many high holidays as I can remember, I could look out at that the Applebaum family, and my eyes would capture Roz's eyes, and she would give me the biggest, most loving, most maternal smile I could ever imagine. She was proud like my own mother, and like me, her boy Jeff lost his mommy this year. And so did so many of us. In the last few months, there have been nearly a dozen of us that have lost our mothers. Just the last couple weeks, we lost Roma Green, mother of Sarah Schmidt, and Lee Henderson died, another mother figure for many, many of us. And we have lost young mothers as well. Terrible tragedy of Joy Morris, wife of Jesley Chermack. The mother to Mariah and Quinn died in her mid-50s on July 10th of this year. Terribly sad. I stand before you like so many of you in pain. But the pain I have felt, the personal pain that so many of us have felt, seems to get more complicated and clouded with the heaviness of our times. As intense as our grief may be, one cannot help but to feel that we still have it better than so many. Losing a loved one from a beheading or from a terrorist attack or from some form of violence seems beyond imaginable. And yet we've seen this in our world over the course of this past year. The sheer magnitude of issues that are occurring in our world right now is overwhelming. These are very scary and frightening times that our world is facing. Israel is one of the many hot spots in the world. But what Israel has gone through, the negative and erroneous information that the press continues to express, has been heart-wrenching and quite frankly makes many of us hurt and angry. We feel what is happening to Israel deep down in our kishkas, don't we? What the press should be reporting on is what has continues to happen in Gaza, which is Hamas's continued mistreatment and disregard for the Palestinian people. And for so many to blame Israel for what Hamas has done, oh, and how many really know the lengths to which Israel regards human life in Gaza. Little is mentioned of all the positive Israel does. We'll talk more about this tomorrow as this topic deserves special focus. Look, we all know negative and heart-wrenching news sells. How often do we hear of anything positive anymore? It just doesn't sell. We just can't get enough of misery, I guess. The world is a mess which makes for great news. Anti-Semitism is rising. In fact, a newer anti-Semitism has been created as seen, as, as seen in the anti-Israel sentiment that is increasing. We especially see this on the college and university campuses by professors and teachers who feel they have the right to spread this anti-Semitism by hiding it under criticism of Israel, as if Israel should not have the right to defend herself. Syria, Ukraine, Africa, Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, and now ISIS, Oive. And we do not have to look very far, or very hard. In fact, we can look at our own backyard. The lack of immigration reform and its effect on families, the greater economic disparity amongst our citizens, the growing levels of crime and violence, the fact that what happened in Ferguson is not an isolated case, but a growing trend in our country as we see prejudice and intolerance continue to spread across our land. It feels that a little bit of our world's light has dimmed. There's so much we could get so easily consumed in the pain and suffering of our world, especially knowing that pain is inevitable, if not around the corner for all of us. But knowing that suffering is part of our human condition and has the potential to grow us, we cannot let our suffering 
guide us as we walk down a difficult personal road. In those moments, we are not at our best. We move like survivors from one critical moment to another. We lose perspective, our foundation cracks, and we break. Feeling broken at times is normal, in doses, but it should not be a way of life. Going through painful life experiences has the ability to grow us, but so too it has the ability to hurt us, to crush us, to leave us bitter, which can lead to our own internal implosion. Pain can create a shadow over us as we focus and concentrate on our pain, which can move us to becoming more self-absorbed and egocentric. And this does not help lessen our pain. It actually ensures that our pain will stay along much longer. As Hillel reminds us, if we are only for ourselves, who are we? Who are we indeed? So, new, what helps us get out from ourselves? What can bring a new life into our perspective? You already know. We have to move forward. Not forgetting about where we have been, but moving forward in our mindset and in what we do. In order to move forward, we must look at another as much as we look inward. Because when we are focused only on our pain, we do not usually see another very well, if at all. How do we feel when we care for another? How do we feel when another cares for us? My sense of loss is as painful as ever. I stand before you in the midst of my own grief, and yes, a bit broken, but the love and care I received from so many of you is remarkable. No, it did not take away my pain, but it reminded me that I was not alone in my grief. And my heart was eased just a bit knowing I had others thinking of me and remembering that even as a rabbi, I'm another human being just like anyone else. And honestly, it has been especially hard officiating at the funerals of so many mothers in these last few months. But each funeral has been an opportunity to move beyond myself, to be enveloped by others' energy. I've continued to grieve and regrieve, but again I am reminded that we are all lifelong grievers. This is part of our human condition. We all have this in common. And it feels a bit better knowing we have each other. We can provide a new life to another who is in the darkness of pain. As bad as we ever have it, we always know of a situation that is worse. Not that that eases our pain, but reminds us that it can always be worse. No room for woe is me. Well, at least not more than 10 minutes a day. And pain can be a great teacher if we receive the lessons. And sometimes we need things to be painful for us to see properly. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, when it is dark enough, you can see the stars. So too, one of the great rock bands in the last three plus decades, U2, offer the following lyric from their newest album, Songs of Innocence. A heart that is broken is a heart that is open. It is in these moments of brokenness that we are given an opportunity. Can we open our hearts to receive that opportunity? Can we allow another's light to enter our darkness? It is hard to move beyond the sheer amount of pain and suffering that can surround us. We can move forward when we acknowledge our pain and give it its proper attention, that at some point, we have to stop the fetching and do something. We gotta get up and move beyond it. We have to ignite our internal light. For the more we focus our energy toward making a difference, the more we bring meaning into our lives. The more we brighten a dark world, the greater chance we will have to feel whole, complete, which is the essence of shalom. What we are experiencing is not new. The world has always had its challenges. Life always has its curveballs. I learned as a young man that synagogue, tikkun olam, and building strong relationships can strengthen our internal energy, our light within. The more positive we do, the stronger our internal light becomes. And it is that eternal light, that eternal energy, that we need to have in order to move forward. Temple Emmanuel is our home away from home. It is a place that can be a respite from our painful world. I think we are so blessed to have a staff and congregation that is so special. From our wonderful 
Gay team with Cam and Stephanie and Andrew, our custodial team of Gerardo and Anthony, our stupendous preschool director, Barbara Smead, and our amazing preschool staff, our wonderful Cantor Mika Simmerly, our cemetery administrator, who is the best funeral director in the business, Wayne Rose, our teaching staff and religious Hebrew at TJS schools, our incredible lay leadership led by our president, Andrew Weinberg, who is proving early on how committed and hardworking he is on our behalf. Our executive committee, board, and committee chairs, our dynamic team of leaders, and committed congregants. These are people you want to hang out with. We are so blessed to be around such a group of professionals, lay leaders, and a congregation that is truly loving, Jewish at its core, and extended family to all who wish to be a part of it. I love that we are a congregation that stands for civil rights, equality, and the right for women to choose. I am proud that we are a reformed Jewish congregation that understands what it means to open its doors and its hearts to others. And what makes this congregation truly what it is, is you. That is why I am here, for we are a congregation made up of some very special people. And we have many wonderfully committed people. And I think those that volunteer and hang out get as much out of the experience as they put in, maybe even a little bit more. That is why being connected to our synagogue is so very enriching. There are so many wonderful and divergent individuals that make up our volunteer corps. And each person adds an or chadash, a new light to brighten our synagogue. And each person has a unique and special light that can bring into our Emmanuel family. Where is your or Hadash, your unique light? Because there are so many ways to be a part of your Emmanuel family. So many ways to connect. From our Shabbat and nature experiences to building a sukkah for our congregation. From adult education to being a part of the Chaburah. From answering the phones in the office to booking at a rock Shabbat service. From schlepping food to acts of tikkun olam. From learning to doing from dialogue to action, from praying in our sanctuary to praying with our feet. Temple Emmanuel is what we make of it. It is not one single piece, but a collective symphony of music makers that can see a greater good beyond the individual. We are a bouquet of unique and beautiful lights that make up an incredible energy for all of us to connect with and engage in as much or as little as we wish. But each time we do connect, has the potential being meaningful and comforting. I may stand before you a broken man, but a very blessed man. For the outpouring of love and sincerity I received after my mother died was overwhelming. I never could have imagined it, and I'm so grateful to you, my beloved congregation. But the beauty is that the more we give, you know the answer, is the more we get. And when we are working together, our congregation becomes a beautiful light for ourselves, our community, for our land. Or Hadash Ba'atzenu, a new light for our land, comes from within our enlightened hearts, our bright minds, and our glowing actions. May this Rosh Hashanah bring a new light to our world, and may we all be a part of that collective light. King Yilhatzon, may this be God's will 